No, no, I'm not 100 percent sure either. So mm -hmm. I don't want to get caught like you know maybe saying something that's not totally true. Okay, but we were talking about that the whole big economic crisis recently. Um, as far as all the different bit pieces, I mean, there was the housing stuff, but right. What you're talking about well, is control the, of oil. All the liar loans. Yes. Well, that was that was one thing that I believe was actually the foundation of the financial crisis. The fact that many, many, many loans were made that were underwritten and guaranteed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that became the gambling instruments, essentially, that were then sold and securitized and turned into derivatives that kind of brought the whole system down. And one of my complaints about the financial regulation bill that was just signed today by President Obama was that Fannie and Freddie are left out of the bill. I mean, they're still hanging out there with some $250 billion of taxpayer bailouts, okay? And the mortgages that have been at the bottom of the financial crisis, I believe, are still being, still being issued, like no money down, FHA loans, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my that's my two cents kind of on the on the financial crisis in the role of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Um, but one of the other things that you had asked me about was derivatives trading, and to the best of my knowledge, it used to be up until maybe the early '90s or mid '90s that traders in derivatives futures contracts like oil, okay, or gasoline or jet fuel or, or these sorts of commodities had to be people that had a legitimate interest in the commodity itself. They were either producers or they were users. And the example I give is uh, an oil company like ExxonMobil and an airline like United Airlines, a producer of jet fuel and a user of jet fuel entering into a futures contract or a derivatives contract to lock in prices going forward. Now, that's a legitimate use of a hedge and a legitimate use of a derivative at some point, I believe, in the early to mid-90s, that restriction limiting, say, we'll just say jet fuel trading to airlines and refiners was basically lifted so that Mark and Laurie could trade jet fuel back and forth. And then this, of course, caused a ballooning in the trading of derivatives to, to the point where the retail investor was not just, you know, buying internet stocks, but also, you know, engaging basically in derivatives trading through the futures markets and the commodities markets. So I, I think that was also a problem, okay, and that that was allowed to go on. Mm -hmm. So As far as you know, um, that's still okay to do? Yeah, as far as I know, that's still okay to do. I mean, you or I can go to a, a commodities broker rather than a stock broker, just go on the web, open an account, and start uh, trading euro dollars, I mean, on the currency markets. You know, trade anything. Mm -hmm. Pork bellies, orange juice, um, oil. So you're saying that it's a particular problem when you trade... Um you're not talking about all commodities. You're only talking about jet fuel. What? Well, what I wonder is whether people with no legitimate economic interest in the 
in the commodity should be allowed to be trading it because they might as well be at Vegas in a casino. I mean, what use do you and I have to be betting on the price of jet fuel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or uh, well, a freight car full of iron ore. But what use do we have to be betting on Apple? Um, oh, because we're financing Apple, I guess. Yes, we are. I mean, okay. when you buy stock in a company... That, that company is looking for investors okay. who want to share in the profits mm -hmm. and share in the growth. You are buying mm -hmm. a piece of Apple computer. Okay. Okay, say, mm -hmm. um, versus, you know, I mean, literally placing a bet on the price of oil. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you could say that, well, in some cases, you know, that technically if you let the futures contract expire, you know, the tanker truck would show up at your house, and indeed it would, but, you know, mm -hmm. um, people do not invest in commodities futures contracts in order to take delivery unless they're an airline, an oil company, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, so I thought maybe if we had gone back to the old way, where just outright gambling on the price of something, you know, was restricted. Um, we might have a more sane financial system. Mm -hmm. System. Now, a strict libertarian would say, well, people should be able to gamble on whatever they want. Well, fine. Maybe you should be able to go into the casino in Vegas and bet on the price of oil instead. At least, you know, you're betting, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, okay. so that's my two cents. Thank you.